Good morning, Trinity. We ask that if anyone want to join in with us uh, to help with devotion, it would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> I'm going to walk so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to walk so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. And make a joyful noise over to his with him. It says here, it says, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In the hands of the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills and his also. The sea is his. He made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, the maker. I read Psalms 95 from the first to the seventh verse. And may God add a blessing to the reading of his word and it be food for our Amen. If you will bow your heads in prayer with me, please. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come out in your house. We ask that you continue to bless each and every member that's represented here. Bless the church as a whole, the pastor and our first lady. Father God, we thank you and we're leaning and dependent on you. We realize that we can do nothing without you. Father God, we ask that you help us to do your will and not our own. Father God, we ask that you bless those who are in nursing homes, hospitals, those who are behind prison walls, our schools, our churches, our city, and the nation, Lord, because we are in a bad way. Yeah. Father God, I thank you, and I ask these blessings and all blessings in your son Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's all right, that's all right. That's all right, oh, that's all right. Since I know I got a seat in the kingdom, that's all right, oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Since I know I got a seat in the kingdom, that's all right. Oh, I never been to heaven, but I've been told the streets up there are paved with gold. Since I know I got a seat in the kingdom, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. And I'll be gone. Since I know I got a seat in the kingdom.
in the church said amen. amen. How many of you know you got a seat in the kingdom? That's all right. I said that's all right. If somebody here believes that's all right. Let's talk about me as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. I have a seat in the kingdom, and that's all right. Amen and amen. Thank you for those who have let us in this portion of service. And we thank God for you who have so much to be grateful for. How many of you know God is blessing you right now? God is blessing you right now. And so we give God the praise and we give God the glory on this dreary, uh, rainy, dark Sunday morning. But the sun still shines. And I'm talking about the S-O-N, Jesus, who is the light of the world, still shines. Our scripture for the Lord, praise, O oh, servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to his setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And with the prince of his people, he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. May God add his richest blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Father, we come today and we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us as we come with no form or fashion, but we come humbling ourselves before you, O oh God, asking that you would have mercy upon us. We pray, O oh God, that as we take part in this service, that you would bless our endeavors, our attempts to give you the praise. Bless those that are gathered here, bless those that are joining us in whatever way that they feel suitable to do. O oh God, we pray for those who are shut in, those who are sick, those who desire, are in need of a blessing. We pray because you are God and you are worthy and you deserve our praise. Oh God, we pray that you bless Trinity, that you bless every church opening and give you all the praise and all of the glory. In Jesus name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. If you would repeat with me the Lord's Prayer in unison, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who... Good morning. We're going to ask that the choir would come. Let's get the choir hand for being with us on this morning. And they're going to give us, amen, our morning hymn. Amen and amen. It's going to be glory to his name. I'm going to ask everybody that's able to stand. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory. Glory to glory to his name. So wondrously safe from Jesus singing glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. Amen. Singing glory to his name. Amen. We're going to ask our ushers to come with our mission offering at this time.
Our Father God, we thank you for those who have given. We thank you for those who have walked. Thank you for those who you're going to restore their breath to. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. You deserve to be able to breathe hard, Vivian. <laughs> amen. Thank you for those that have given. Um, why don't you just take the moment and just wave to those across the, the, the room or say hello to someone today. Just wave and greet them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is good to be alive. Uh, to attend in, in nursing homes and in hospitals, and some that we have uh, been asked not to name with them as well. Amen and amen. I don't, I 
Well, I don't. I'm not afraid of the guy that I serve. give them a better hand in that. Amen. Under the situations and they yet are singing unto the glory of God. And so we are grateful unto that. We're going to prepare for our tithes and the offering. And we want to remind uh, those that are watching us that we do uh, thank you for what you have sent in your absence. Those who use Cash App, those that use Givelify, we thank you for what you have given. Those that place their offerings in the mailbox and mail them to the church, we are grateful for your support. God loves a cheerful giver, and you cannot be God giving no matter how you try. I believe in that. I practice that. I believe in the tithing. I practice the tithing, and I know what God does in my life and in my family life. And so we encourage you to give as the Lord has blessed you to give. We thank God for the, the ushers and um, it is in their hands. We're asking that you uh, do as they ask you to do on today. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So grateful to all of you that are here. So good to see all of those that I have not seen in a while. Amen. Still breathing. Good to see you. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise on today. Always grateful for the staff here at Trinity Baptist Church. Good to see the ushers on post. Hallelujah. So grateful for the man of God. I call my husband and pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jimmy Hardaway Jr. Can we put our hands together for him? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I was getting ready, getting ready for, for, for church this morning. I was getting ready, getting ready. 
getting ready. So I hope this blesses somebody. If it don't bless you, it's going to bless somebody outside. Amen. So I was getting ready. So all of a sudden I heard, jump in, jump in, jump in. I'm like, where am I going to jump to? This is the sink. Am I supposed to jump in the sink? I don't, I don't get it. So jump in. So the word of the Lord says, whatever it is that you have asked me for, jump in and give me the praise for it. So I stop by to encourage you with that on today. Give God the praise, the honor, and the glory because whatever you ask him for, just jump in and give him the praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for being a prayer answering God. We thank you in the name of Jesus that all power belongs to you. God, we come today for no other reason but to lift up your name and to bring honor and worship and glory and praise to you. We thank you, oh God, for bringing us all week long, God, so that we can arrive at this place to worship you. So God, we're going to worship you today, God, because you are wonderful, you are merciful, you are kind in the mighty name of Jesus. God, despite what's going on around us, you have never left your throne. So God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for being in charge. Jesus, thank you for you. Thank you for your work that you completed on Calvary. We thank you in the name of Jesus for your work. We thank you, oh God, for your blood. We thank you, oh God, for your power because there's no other power but your power. So we thank you right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your power. Can't move without you. Can't breathe without you. Can't function without you. But because of you, Holy Spirit, dwelling on the inside of us, we can move with your power and assistance. Now, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would take over the remainder of this service. Hallelujah. I thank you in the name of Jesus for the word that you have put down in the man of God's belly. So, God, when he opens up his mouth, may he preach oh God with the anointing of fire and speak the oracles that you have given him God somebody came because they need a word on today somebody came because they said God I'm coming I'm expecting a word from you so I pray right now that you would do it God as only you can God somebody needs healing heal them somebody needs deliverance deliver them somebody at home who's convalescing heal them in the mighty name of Jesus somebody watching is living listening and looking for a blessing give it to him God in the name of Jesus now God not only bless the city but bless the nation in the mighty name of Jesus President Biden needs prayer warriors praying for him and everybody in his camp in the mighty name of Jesus so God I thank you right now those who are traveling those who are driving those who are on the bus those who are walking those who are in schools those of us who still go to work oh God cover us in the mighty name of Jesus God, so we thank you right now. We thank you right now. Who is thanking him right now? Who in the house is thanking God right now? So God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that those who are thanking you, that you would give them a double portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I thank you. I thank now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. So God, I thank you for what my eyes have not seen and what my ears have not heard because I know that after I jump in, God, I thank you that the answer is already here. If you love him, give God the praise, the honor, and the glory and say amen. 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 Let's welcome the choir back again. My soul loves Jesus, my soul yes, yes. loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, his name my soul loves Jesus 
Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, bless his name. My soul, yeah, yes, yes, love yes. Jesus, yes. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Yes, yes, my, yes. Soul loves Jesus. my soul loves him. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Oh, my soul. My soul loves him. Yes, my soul. My soul loves him. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Oh, my soul. My soul loves him. Yes, my soul. You know you hung on the cross so that I might be free. Nails in his hands, nails in his feet. Oh, what a joy way down in my soul. Yes, my soul loves the Lord. Oh, my soul. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves him. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Oh, my soul, my soul loves him. Yes, my soul, you know, he hung on the cross so that I might be free. Nails in his hands, nails in his feet. Oh, what a joy! Way down in my soul, yes, my soul loves the Lord. Oh, my soul, my soul loves him. My soul loves Jesus, bless his name. Oh, my soul, my soul loves him. Yes, my soul. think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for me. Amen. My determination is to give God the praise. Whenever I'm in the house of the Lord, I want to tell God thank you for what he has done for me. 
for what he has done for me. Amen. Amen. In the, in the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, in the 18th chapter, 18th chapter of Luke, I want to call your attention to a passage of scripture. from. Amen. And all of us make mistakes sometimes. Somebody didn't say amen. In in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, one chapter over. Amen. He entered Jericho and was passing through. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up, and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be with guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost, that which was lost, that which was lost, amen and amen. Today I want to talk to you concerning uh, this story about a man named Zacchaeus. A man named Zacchaeus. Scripture somewhat gives us a background of who Zacchaeus was. The Bible says that Jesus had entered and passed through a city named Jericho. Jericho was a large town about eight miles. For those who have visited of Jordan, 19 miles northeast from Jerusalem. The thing about the city is that it always has played an important role in the scriptures. Near to the city, the Israelites crossed the Jordan when they entered into the land of Canaan in Joshua chapter 3, verse 16. It was the first city taken by Joshua who destroyed it to the foundation and pronounced a curse on him who would rebuild it. This curse was literally fulfilled in the day of Ahab nearly 500 years later and afterwards became the place of the school of the prophets. In this place, Elijah worked a signal miracle 
greatly to the advantage of the inhabitants by rendering the waters near it that were before bitter, sweet, and wholesome. In point of size, it was second only to Jerusalem. It was sometimes called the city of palm trees from the fact that there were many palms in the vicinity. In chapter 18 of Luke, we read that as Jericho, as Jesus drew near to Jericho, that he healed a blind man. Matthew records that there were two, and no doubt the news of this miracle created much excitement. In the city of Jericho, people wanted to see this Jesus. And as Jesus entered the city and passed through, Luke informs us that there was a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, a publican. Publicans were tax collectors for the Roman government of that time. Republicans often had bad reputation since the system was open to abuse and extortion was common. He was a Hebrew who worked for the enemy government. Therefore, he was labeled by the Jews as a traitor. The fact that Luke emphasizes that Zacchaeus was chief among them implies that he was responsible for all of the taxes of Jericho and had other collectors under him. The tax collectors existed as one of the most hated professions existing at that time. Even today, we don't like to talk about taxes. The mention of taxes is held with great contempt. Amen. Somebody is going to say amen in a little while. I know working for the IRS for a good part of my life, I understand that nobody likes paying taxes. And we don't like the one who collect the taxes. The, pish, the position had been very lucrative to Zacchaeus for the Bible states and he was rich. After everything else that had been mentioned about him and he was rich which may have indicated another reason for being so despised, but also indicates that there were people of many different social status that were interested in Jesus. It was not just the poor. It was not just those of medium income, but everybody wanted to see Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we ought to be glad today when it comes to Jesus that it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you are poor. It doesn't matter what your background is. It does not matter how people think of you. Jesus tells us to come as we are. Whoever you are, wherever you have come from, whatever your past might be, you can still come as you are. Jesus tells us that I have room for you, even when others give up on you. I'm glad that Jesus will give you another chance. Have I got a witness? How many of you know that Jesus loves us in spite of ourselves? But then there is another scenario which needs to be factored in that you ought to want to see 
Jesus for yourself. So many of us have heard of him. So many of us have heard what he has done for others. But every once in a while, you need to have an interaction with the Lord yourself. You need to see him for yourself. While you watch him bless others, you ought to be able to say that while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I don't know about y'all, I don't want the Lord to pass me by. I don't want the Lord to forget about me. And somebody ought to be glad today that God has not forgotten about you. Somebody ought to be glad this morning as we move into the afternoon that he woke you up this morning. I wish I had some witnesses here. I preached to myself today. He put food on your table. He put clothes on your back. God did not forget about you. You've gone through some things this past year. There have been some that have been sick. There's been some that have been close to death. There are some that have lost some loved ones. But do I have any witness here that say can say that God has still been good to me? God has been good to me. Yes, he has. He has been good to me. He didn't have to be good. Amen. He didn't have to do what he has done, but he did it in spite of ourselves. So many people passed away. It could have been you, but he let death bypass you. He let virus bypass your house. He let, he let bad things go past you. They went to somebody else, but they didn't stop at your house. And you ought to be glad about it. Amen and amen. You ought to want to see Jesus sometime. Zacchaeus is I to see who he was. Rather, what sort of person he was or how he appeared, he had that curiosity which is natural to people to see one of whom they have heard much. It would seem also that in this case, mere curiosity led to his conversion and that of his family, his desire to see Jesus made some changes in his life. But not only did it make changes in his life, it made changes to those that were close to him, those that were near to him. Amen. But for him to see Jesus, he had to get past some things that stood in his way. Physically, the Bible says that he was short in stature. Sometimes it's our own limitations that hold us back or stand in our way. No matter what he did, he could not change some things about himself. And no matter what you do with yourself, there are some things that you can't change yourself. It doesn't matter how much foundation you put on. Doesn't matter how much hair you buy. Doesn't matter, come on and help me somebody here, how you address yourself. At the end of the day, you're still what you are. The one thing we all know about Zacchaeus is that he was vertically challenged. He was a wee little man. If I was really was making a movie about a story, do you know who I would cast him as a kid? A lot of people, when you talk, they said, well, first actor that they can think of is an actor by the name of Danny DeVito. Y'all know who that is, don't y'all? Not quite five feet tall, and often he only plays a crooked and conniving character. And in my mind, that's a kid before Jesus changed him. He had to be small in stature, but he was also small in spirit. When it comes to God's standards, we are all we little people. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That was 
one problem. The other problem was the crowd. Because the Bible says he attempted to see Jesus, but every effort was hampered by the crowd that had gathered. Uh, he, they would allow him through. They pressed together so tightly that no view was available. We read that a large crowd of people who were much taller than he was, was blocking his view. And as he pushed forward, they kept on pushing him back. As he jumped, he discovered he could not jump as high as he wanted to. You understand the crowd can hamper you from what is doing what is right. There are all the times when the crowd might be blocking your view and you can't see him. And, 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 and you have to determine that if I can't see him this way, then I'm going to make up my mind to find a way to see Jesus. Don't let anybody stop you from seeing Jesus. Don't let anybody obstruct your view. Make up in your mind that if it's the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to see Jesus. It wasn't because, let me tell you this, it wasn't because the crowd didn't like him or, or that the crowd wanted to block his view. Amen. It, it, it wasn't it, 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 it wasn't just that. It wasn't that they didn't like Zacchaeus. In fact, the thing was, they weren't even thinking about him. They were trying to see Jesus themselves. Amen. And they didn't even think about him until Jesus mentioned who he was. And my brother says, don't wait till Jesus finds people before you notice them. Bring them through the crowd into the one who will change their life. The greatest tragedy of salvation is that we think that it's someone else's job or that a person is not worth it. But interestingly enough, these people, and interestingly enough, these people weren't trying to stop this man from getting to Jesus. They just didn't think about him. The question is, are you guilty of forgetting about people who need to know Jesus? They weren't thinking about this man, but that's not why the crowd was in the way. It is in verse 11. But this is the thing that we need to remember and understand is that even though there was a crowd, crowds never impressed Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus always moves beyond the crowd. You remember the woman with the issue of blood who reached out to touch Jesus? There was a crowd around him, but when she touched him, he said, who touched me? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Who pressed against me? They said, Lord, there, there, are, there, there, there are other folks around you, but he says there is someone here who reached out that needed a blessing. Amen. He decides, Zacchaeus says, I'm going to see Jesus. Zacchaeus says, I got to figure this out. I got to. He made up in his mind that, that he was going to see Jesus. So the Bible says that he finds a sycamore tree. Are y'all here with me? And he, he climbs the tree in an effort to see Jesus. He says, if I climb the tree, I'll be high enough over the crowd to see what I'm looking for. But climbing the tree made him too high for Jesus. Y'all missed that one. Did y'all hear what I said? He made it in my, I climbed the tree. But Jesus says you didn't have to climb the tree. Sometimes you don't have to do something. Sometimes you just have to wait on God. From these verses we see that Zacchaeus thought he was seeking Jesus. But Jesus was already seeking him. Because the most interesting thing happens that didn't even I think that blew 
Zacchaeus mind. Because Zacchaeus has never met Jesus. Jesus has never met Zacchaeus. But, Zac but Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. I want to tell somebody today, God knows you. God knows where you are. God already knows what you're going through. You don't have to tell God everything. God already knows. And God has already got a plan in effect to work everything out. Anybody here know God has a plan in effect? Anybody here know God is working it out for me? There's somebody in the room that said God has already worked it out for me. When I couldn't fix it myself, when I couldn't do it myself, I, 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 I heard the voice of Jesus. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. He says, for today, I must abide in your house. Come on and help me somebody here. Zacchaeus, you done went too high, come down. Zacchaeus, come on down from the sycamore tree. Because when you get down, we need to go to your house. Oh, bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. I want you to know Jesus will show up at your house. Come on in heaven. Jesus has a miracle for your house. Jesus can open doors for your house. Jesus can make a way for your house. Is there anybody here that knows he's able? To do it. No, 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 don't play with me today. I need a witness today that knows that Jesus will fix it. Yes, he will. I said, thank God today. 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 That Jesus sees you not as you are, but he sees you as you will become. Zacchaeus, the crowd got angry because Jesus knew who Zacchaeus was and they said he eats with sinners. Everyone looked at Zacchaeus, saw a mean, little, little dirty, rotten sinner. When Jesus looked at him in that tree, he must have thought, I'm going to make this short and sweet. Do you know what the name Zacchaeus means? It means pure. Jesus didn't see a crooked tax collector. He saw a man who could become pure. He saw a man who could be so generous that he would give half of his money away. He saw a man that he could forgive. I wish I had somebody here. At the tree, Jesus didn't say, Zach, you a thief. Now repent and pay back what you owe to the people with interest and penalty, and I'll come to your house. But Jesus says, Come on, let's get to know each other. And once you get to know me, you'll see yourself in a different light. Take me to your house. As I looked at the text, I came up with a few things that are, that are true about Jesus. I'm going to close y'all quiet. Jesus will not be confined by human limitation. Jesus will not change for you, but he did die for you. Jesus obeys his commands. Jesus does not exist to grant our wishes. Jesus came for the loss. Let me tell you the story real quick, and, 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 and I hope that somebody gets it. In England, there is a paper factory. I don't know if I ever told this story here. I preached it in other sermons that in England, there is a paper factory that makes the finest stationary in the world. One day, a man touring the factory asked what it was made from. He was shown a huge pile of old rags and told that the rags content was what determined the quality of the paper. The visitor couldn't believe it. He said, this is the finest stationery that I've ever seen. This is the finest 
finest paper that I've ever seen made. And you're going to tell me that you want to show me these dirty rags. You're trying to trick me. You're trying to, you're trying to, 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 to not show me what your secret is to making this paper. But in another few weeks, he received from the company a package of paper with his initials embossed on it. On the top piece were written these words, dirty rags transformed. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Dirty rags transformed. Y'all don't understand sometimes you, they tell you that you have to throw your trash away, but you got to take the recyclables and you got to put them in another bin. Do I have any witnesses here? And you wonder, what are they going to do with that? Well, what they're going to do, they're going to take them and recycle them. Aren't you glad that God recycled us? Made us better than what we used to be. Don't look like what we came from, but thank God that we are what he's made us to be. God bless your hearts today. I'm done. I'm done today. This is true of the Christian life. Only Jesus can transform your life from what we were into something new and wonderful. And if you can see Jesus, if you can see Jesus, if you can see Jesus, he will make a difference. Since Jesus came into my life, what a wonderful, wonderful joy has come over me. Let us pray. Father, we come and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. Pray for your blessings that you would touch their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Might be somebody that desires part of this fellowship let me open doors of church first I should, let me open doors of church for it real, real quick amen amen desires to be part of this fellowship the body to be part of the church and you have not accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior we invite you to accept him in your heart if you're not present today if you're watching us in whatever avenue whatever way you can accept jesus christ as your lord and savior and the church said, Amen. God bless you. Come on, us.
to you with a pure heart, a pure mind. And God, we continue to give you all the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
what he has done for us. And we thank God again. If we could, just let him require your hands on today. And let us just help us with your hands on today. Give yourself a hand on today, Lord, in the rocky road in the parking lot. We thank God for you. Amen. And amen. And amen. Do we have any birthdays? We're October. Do we have October birthdays? No, I don't. That's why I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so happy birthday. Goodbye, and then what else? They have, have birthdays. Is there anyone celebrating their birthday? Make sure that you get enough to share with others. <laughs> 